This one, I'm gonna go over a couple other specific tips and tricks that's gonna improve your cut ends. So I'm gonna go over some of the tools that I'm gonna be using in this video to show you what I'm using that actually helps me do really, really straight uh, ceiling cut ends, and that will help you do a lot better ceiling cut ends that'll look just like mine. So I'm gonna go over some of these tools right now, and one of them that I use, that's one of the basic things is gonna be just your cut in bucket. And I've got a two gallon bucket. I like using a two gallon bucket. It has, holds just the right amount of, the right amount of paint. And inside of it, I've got a uh, bucket grid, a one gallon bucket grid. And I've had some questions. People wanna know what that grid looks like. So I'm gonna pull it out right here. I just had a comment on one of my cut-in videos the other day asking if they could actually see the grid. And here's the one gallon grid. So I use a two gallon bucket and I use a one gallon grid. And the one gallon grid just sits down in the bucket just right and it's wide enough that it actually will cover my four inch roller and nap. So this is, the roller that I'm using and it's a Wooster four inch roller right here with a roller cover. I like using the Purdy White Dove uh, roller covers and I like a three eighths inch roller cover. And I use this to actually, after I do my cut-ins, I use that to actually back roll, of, back roll over it. So when I roll my ceilings or roll my walls, the stippling will actually match the walls when you roll the walls. The cut-in, when you do the cut-ins, it's gonna leave a brush stroke that grows across the ceilings, but you wanna stipple over that so it actually will match the stippling on the walls. And then two of the tricks that I'm gonna be showing you in this video are gonna require a five-in-one tool, and that's gonna to be to score an edge up there or a groove in your ceiling line that will give you the ability to do a really straight cut in. Got a caulking gun with clear caulking on some ceilings that are really bumpy and rough. You're gonna put, or you can put, a bead of clear caulking up there. I'm gonna show you that. So those are a couple of the accessories that I got with me that I'm gonna be doing this. And of course, you gotta have a brush. I've got uh, the two brushes that I'm using to do my ceiling cut-ins. They're actually Purdy brushes. I do like Purdy brushes. I've used the Wooster brushes. They're really good. I haven't used the Corona brushes. I heard the Coronas are really good. But depending on the paint you're using will depend on the brush that I use. And if the paint is a really thin paint, I like using a soft or a medium stiff brush and the Purdy XL Glide right here is the brush I use when my paints are pretty thin. If the paints are pretty thick like this uh, Benjamin Moore Ultra Spec right here, I'm gonna use a stiff brush and I like using the Purdy Clear Cut brush right here. This is labeled a stiff brush. It's a nylon polyester brush. And I do use, now, I used to use just two and a half inch angled sash brushes. I've stepped up, I'm using the three inch brushes now. The wider the brush, the farther your cut ends are gonna go. But I do like an angled sash brush because it can get into the corners a lot easier than just a straight, straight brush. So I'm using this right here today. I'm gonna be using the clear cut, the Purdy Clear Cut Glide brush right here. And the glide actually just refers to the handle and the width of the ferrule itself. So got this right here, all these tools. If you're interested in purchasing the same tools that I'm using when I'm doing my ceiling cut-ins, you can check out my video description down there. I'll leave a link to all these tools that I like and I've used and tested for a lot of years. You could also go to my tool store at my website, theidahopainter.com. But now we're gonna get to showing you how to do these ceiling cut-ins and make them look perfectly straight like a professional. So I'm gonna go over two new tips or tricks or hacks here. They're gonna give you really good ceiling lines. And I've had a lot of questions on my previous videos on uh, situations where the ceiling line or the 90 degree angle is extremely rough, has a texture, or say you got um, uh, the popcorn ceilings. And there's a couple of scenarios, a couple of things that will actually help you out to make those ceiling cut-ins a lot easier for you. And one of them is using a five-in-one tool and a simple five-in-one right here. I always carry one of these in my pocket as a painter. There's a lot of things this can be used for, but if you stick a five-in-one tool up in the corner, the 90 degree corner, and you just score a little uh, cut in there, it's gonna leave like this little trough where your brush can actually just cruise along that little score and it'll help you make a straight line. So the ceiling up there, if there's a lot of texture, if it's really rough, you don't have a nice smooth 90 degree angle, then just take your five in one, score it, and then do your cut in. Another option is to actually take and use a caulking gun and clear caulking, but the, the problem with this is, is you do have to wait for the caulking to dry. 
So you'd have to do all your caulking of your ceiling and then wait a day and then come back and cut it in. But that'll actually give you a really, really smooth 90 degree corner to be able to do really straight ceiling cut-ins. So I really like that method, like that option if your ceilings are really bumpy and you really want to have a perfectly straight line. One of the things about it is just you just want to put a little small bead in there, not too much caulking, but use clear caulking, let it dry, and then do your cut in. So I'm going to get up here, I'm going to show you what just scoring it looks like, what it looks like to put the caulking on there, and then we're going to do some cut ins. So one of the obvious things that you're actually going to have to have when you're doing your cut-ins is a ladder because obviously I can't get up here and do my cut-ins without having a ladder. So I got a six foot ladder here I'm going to be working with and I got a caulking gun up here to show you this method and then I'm going to show you the five in one tool. Up here, this is a pretty smooth uh, 90 degree angle, but if it was pretty rough, I could just take my five in one, I'm just going to stick it in here and just gouge it right there and it just leaves a little cut right there. So once again, I'm just going to put it up here, put a little bit of pressure and then just score it right down there. And now I can just do my cut and take my brush in there and just run it right along that score. It's not something that you can see, you know, from the video, even if I got the, the video up here close enough, you're not going to be able to see it because it's really, really microscopic. It's just a little score and you don't want to see it anyways because it's really, um, because it's, it's a cut in the wall, but the paint actually will just fill that little trough as you run it right across here. But that's a really handy trick to do if you want to make your ceiling cut in straight. Now we're going to move on to the caulking method. So if now we're going to do this option when it comes to caulking, and this would be in extreme cases where it's really bumpy and they've got the spray texture or the texture up into that 90 degree um, corner up there, I take and cut my caulking, I'm going to cut my tube at a, at a nice 45 degree angle there and really small and then I'm going to put a small bead of clear caulking up there. I'm just going to, I don't want it to be very big, but it's just going to be a nice tiny little bead along there and then I would just take my finger and then just smooth that out and then I'm going to let that dry and it'll have a nice smooth rounded corner right there and it's going to make it so your cut and your brush will run along a smooth edge and give you a really really nice straight line. So now I'm going to get to doing the cut ends on the ceiling. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks doing the cut ends and I'm just going to put, I put some paint in my bucket and I usually put you know a couple inches of paint in my bucket I don't want it up too high, you don't want it too low, you want to have enough in there that you can work with and not having to fill your bucket all the time. But I'm going to get my, my roller all loaded up, I want that thing completely loaded up, ready to use. I think it's really important that you back brush your cut ends. And then I'm going to get my brush full of paint and I like to just take, dip my brush in here and then I just pat it on the side of my bucket. So I'm just going to pat it on the side. Get it loaded up, pat it on the side, and then I'm ready to actually paint. And a couple of the, the tips to not spilling paint or getting paint dripped everywhere, just take it, load up your, your brush. Don't want to get too much paint on it, but get a little bit of paint on it, pat it to the side, and as I move it to my area that I'm actually going to be painting, I actually subconsciously, I do because I've been painting so long, but you actually turn your brush or rotate your brush so it doesn't actually drip. So I'm going to pat it in here, make sure it's not dripping, and then I'm going to rotate my brush to where I'm going. As long as your brush is rotating, you can put a lot of paint on this thing, and if I let it set here, it's, it's going to start to drip, but as long as I rotate this brush, in different directions, it will never drip. So whenever I'm taking my brush to my cut-in area where I'm gonna do my cut-in, I'm actually rotating it. And it's a technique that I actually use when I'm rolling walls too, or doing my cut-ins with my four-inch brush. I'm gonna take my roller, I'm gonna take it out of my bucket, and I'm gonna be rotating it as I go. And it's just something I do now after so many years, I'm subconsciously pulling out of my bucket and then rotate it so it's not going to do any drips. As long as this thing is rotating, it will never drip on your floor. So I'm going to get up here and do my ceiling cut-ins. I do have, I think, at least four or five videos on how to do ceiling cut-ins. It gives you a lot of tips and tricks, more than what I'll show you even here. So you've got to go check out my playlist on doing ceiling cut-ins like a professional. But I'm going to get it up here, put my brush there, and I actually get it 
away, like a half an inch away from my cut in area and then I begin to work up to it and then I drag my paint one way and typically it's gonna go about you know, over a foot or so and then I'll come back the opposite direction and drag it back the opposite direction because typically your wall is going to have texture in it and as you're dragging your paint one way it's going to go over the top of the textures and leave some mist spots so you drag it one way drag it back the next way and after I drag it back the next way then I take and I back roll it but I'll take and do a full a section I'm going to do this whole section I'm going to drag it one way I'm gonna come back and drag it another way. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more. Drag it one way, come back and drag it another way. Do this section over here. I'm gonna drag it one way, and then drag it another way. And then I'm gonna come back and back roll, because this now is brushed, and if I roll my walls now up to here, you're gonna see a different texture left by the paint from rolling it versus brushing it. So I always go back and back roll it just like this. And I try to get as close as I can to the ceiling, and then I move on and do my next section. It's just like that, I'm gonna come up, turn your brush as you're coming, One way, go back the other way. Just like that, and then you're gonna back roll it. And just like that, that's how you do your ceiling cut-ins. And I typically like the method of ceiling cut-ins that I do. I like my, my cut-in, especially if you got really bumpy ceilings or corners, I like my paint to go up onto the ceiling very slightly versus down onto the wall only slightly because it goes up onto the ceiling a little bit. When you're looking at it, it will always look straighter than if it's below the ceiling a little bit. You'll see a crooked line a lot better. So I'm always siding to getting my paint onto the ceiling versus keeping it down onto the wall. Okay, I gotta get another section again. Just gonna give you one last demonstration again. I'm just gonna take, dip my brush into my paint, gonna pat it on the sides, make sure my brush is loaded up, and now I'm gonna carry it to where I'm going. I'm gonna take, get it about an inch or so from my cut-in area, and then I'm gonna work up to the cut-in, glide it right along my ceiling, it's gonna go about a foot or so before it starts to run out of paint, before it starts to run out of paint. Just take and cut it back the opposite direction. And then you're gonna back roll it. To me this back rolling process is extremely important to back roll this to eliminate haloing or any type of color difference. When you're actually brushing it versus rolling it, it lays out the tint in a different way so you could actually get a color difference where you've actually brushed it versus where you actually rolled your wall. So to me, I really uh, think it's an important process to actually back roll that. And then the next step would be to begin rolling your walls. If you're you know, uh, the only person working on a room, I like to, before this actually dries, I like to roll my wall. So if you do the whole ceiling, I can actually do a whole bedroom, basically a 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 bedroom. I can cut that whole ceiling in, it'll still be wet and then I can start rolling on my walls because I can do it really fast, I got a lot of experience. But if you're just learning and your cut-ins are really slow, by the time you get around the room, this is gonna be dry and it could give you a haloing effect where you see the color difference where you rolled it, where you cut it in versus where you rolled it. So I, I would just, as a one man show, just do one wall at a time. So I'm gonna cut this ceiling in right here, this wall, and then before, before I turn the corner, I'm gonna roll this wall and then move on to the next wall. And one of the tips to actually doing these cut-ins, I think I've discussed it once before in one of my cut-in videos, is to actually hold your breath. So when you're doing your cut-in, get it up there and just hold your breath, do your cut-in, and because it, it, while you're breathing, it has a tendency to actually make your cut-ins a little bit crooked until you get a lot more experience doing your cut-ins. Then you could actually breathe and talk and like I'm actually doing and doing them. But it's taken me years and years of, and miles and miles of doing ceiling cut-ins to get them straight like this.